Hello folks, my Kelly 7 here. Hopefully this won't go badly. I uh, have a flat tire. I think it's a slow leaking flat tire, so I'm taking it to the dealership so I can get a new tire. And hopefully the tire won't go flat on my way. That's the hope. Come on. There you go. Couldn't get through my fat. Come on, zipper. Up. There you go. God, this thing is dirty. Sitting in a garage all that time. And it's a rainy day today, so I'm worried about the supercharger, but it's not raining right now, so we can hope that things will be better. I think today's the 23rd of May. former student of mine Chinese lady uh, she's an artist she's from a very famous art family in China doesn't speak a word of English <laughs> even though she has an associate's degree I told her when she was in my class I said whoever's translating for you you're gonna need them the entire time you're in college and that was like five years ago Anyway, very nice lady, very generous, very kind. She's moving to Ireland. Her husband got citizenship, and so she's moving there. Because people uh, in China, they're trying to get out. The government there is so bad right now. Uh, Xi Jinping, otherwise known as Winnie the Pooh, apparently he's trying to be president for life, and there's a lot of money that's just disappearing, and people are disappearing so a lot of people in China are like screw this I'm out and of course the COVID thing they locked down all of Shanghai and people are starving to death in their apartments and stuff so they're trying to get out and uh, I've got a bunch of Chinese former students who came over here back in like 2014 and uh, they either haven't been able to go back or they're unwilling to go back and so uh, yeah, they're either staying here or moving on to other countries where they can get citizenship because this lady's rich and so her family paid whatever that price is so that you can become an Irish citizen. If you're one of the rich people, you can do it. You can just buy your citizenship, basically. Good for her, you know. I'm, good she's getting, I'm glad she's getting out of there. Terrible place that it is. Wish I could get Irish citizenship. Actually, it'd be EU, wouldn't it? I'd like to have dual citizenship. That way I can get the short line. Either going or coming, there's always one shorter line. And if you've got both passports, man, you can just go to the shorter one. Oh, boy. I'll just have to stay an awesome American. Oh. <laughs> Boo hoo for me. America, man, America. Best country in the world. Have you been anywhere else? No. I've been all around the world. And I've seen beautiful places. Places that are perfectly fine. All the amenities that we have and more. But I call America my home and my, my favorite place to be because it's where I grew up. I know the culture. I know the language. It's the place I feel most at home. And so that's why I'm here. If I didn't feel that way, that's weird. Oh, you know what happened? I forgot to turn on my other camera. Hang on.
Okay, I'm recording on the Senna now as a backup. Hopefully I won't need it. I haven't needed it for the past few, but you never know. Come on, tire. Don't go flat on me. So this here, you can see all this construction now. If you look at the videos over the past, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years, you will see many a change. And this is the latest one on Old Stage Road. Oh, Jesus, traffic, come on. Seriously, at this hour? It's, it's like 9 o'clock. What are you doing? Anyway, that's going to be a highway that goes underneath this road. It's going to go that way. It's called the Outer Belt Line, also known as Highway 540, and this part is going to be a toll road. And one good thing about it is you'd be able to go from the airport directly to my house, pretty much. Or you'd be able to go from my school to the northern campus of my school just hop on that road and go no no red lights and traffic and all that craziness because very few people get on the 540 at this point because of the toll but if I'm only going once in a while I just use my easy pass they have the, the camera thing that takes pictures of your license plate which if they took a picture of me right now I'd be like pull over because my plate expired in March <laughs> I wasn't about to bring it in with a flat tire and uh, my major surgeries so but I'm on my way now gonna get it inspected today and then once that gets into the system I'll I'll re-up then I'll be legal again just like for my Honda oh uh, goodness gracious so uh, first time you guys seen this in a while right my Kaylee 7 on a Cowie this is my completely uh, irrational motorcycle. I'm a 51 year old college administrator, former ESL teacher, uh, overweight, under exercised, damaged, sickly, <laughs> and yet here I am on the motorcycle, on the most ridiculous form of motorcycle that you could choose for my age. I dare say it's even more ridiculous than the H2 because this motorcycle is a naked and there's really no wind protection. Making my fatness even fatter and heavier. <laughs> oh well. They're probably going to get a laugh out of looking at me today when I get there because I'm going to Team Power Sports and Garner. And yes, I do like them. People say, do you like Team Power? Yes, I do. I like them a lot. They're very good. Their service department is great. Friendly, efficient. I mean, it's expensive because you have to pay someone else to do it and inflation and all that. But I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. So, I mean, I can do other things. Anything carpentry, electrical plumbing in the house, I'll manage that. I've done that. But when it comes to vehicles, nope, cannot be trusted. I've killed too many. And on a motorcycle, if you screw up, you're dead. So, no thanks. I am going to bring it to the people who do it for a living. And if they frick it up, then I can always sue them. Some people are like, well, I do it myself because I don't trust anybody but myself. Well, I trust everybody but myself because I suck at mechanical things. Anyway, right now Moose is cringing, right? Uh oh, you could do it yourself, Mike. Screw that. Not doing it. Oh, I love this bike. It just feels so nimble and so responsive. And I could do all kinds of insanely awesome things on this on this little motorcycle right here. 
but instead I'm going to try to be a good little boy, just get myself to the dealership, get my new tire, get my inspection, and be done. I don't think I need an oil change, although it has been a year, almost, it's almost a year, it'll be a year in June. And the guy said, you know, only after 4,000 miles you do it. Well, I haven't gone 4,000 miles in a year on this, I don't think. I've had a rough year. Anyway. Oh, this is such a nice bike. <laughs> Alright, so what's going on with me besides being happy to be on this motorcycle? Well, uh, I'm making progress, I think, on my base. Uh, I know, people like, click, never mind, not motorcycle topic, I know, I know. But there is something that I, I figured out, that, you know, I always tell my students never give up, and, and I remember never giving up when I was younger, you know, when I was trying to get my education, and working really hard. I remember all of that. And I tell my students, don't give up, I'm the product of not giving up. You can look at my example. Well, when it comes to the base, there are certain days where you feel like, geez, you know, I'm not making any progress, or you look at the, the, the ones that you see on the YouTubes and the, and the music you listen to, and you're like, oh my God, they're so great. I can never do that. And you kind of psych yourself out. Suddenly you become unable. Uh -uh. I think that rear tire is getting a bit squishy. Be careful. I believe that if the rear tire goes, the front gets real squirrely. And that's what happened on my Harley that time. And I know you guys are like, God, another nail, Mike? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I mean, I looked, I didn't turn the tire all the way around, but all I know is it went flat and then I filled it and then it went flat again, just sitting in the garage. So obviously there's a problem. And that is why I am going off to the dealership. So, um, there was a day recently where I didn't practice. I was very tired. I had a rough weekend doing stuff. And uh, then yesterday, yesterday and the day before, I think, I, I picked up the bass again and was playing around. And, and I, I keep making these little discoveries, these little epiphanies of the pattern on the fretboard, on the neck. So, like, if you're on the... It's a four-string one. So if you're on the E string, which is the, the one closest to my face, the E string, and then the one directly next to it, parallel to it and that same fret area uh, those two kind of go together and then two frets down on the on the uh, A string uh, there's another oops and they go together those that pattern of three they go together like an L shape Kind of like the shape that a, uh, what do you call it, uh, I think it's a rook on the, the horsey guy, <laughs> on the chess board. Anyway, so um, I figured that out, and you can play you know, all kinds of different stuff, blues, riffs, different kinds, different keys. And uh, there's this YouTube channel, it's got like bass backing track it's called, and it's like in, in A7, or in, in E, or in G major. And so I was trying to figure it out by, you know, going, okay, well this is the, this is the G, and so this is the root note, and so this is what I need to push, and go down seven, and, and I thought, you know what, screw this, I'm not getting it right. So what I did was, I went to, uh, I just listened to the track and the other instruments on the track. Neither of, neither of which, it was a drum and a, and a rhythm guitar. 
and based on the rhythm guitar I could tell what note to play to match it I just sounded it out and that's how I discovered that pattern it was in a bunch of different ones and I realized oh there's a pattern to this that I can make use of woohoo so that's what I've been doing and uh, on my my Kaylee Sevens musical journey the guitar version the bass version I've got a saxophone version as well um, on that one most recently I I sounded out a song that I've, I've been listening to for a couple of months now it's called water by the stranglers and uh, Just by sounding it out, just by listening to it on my headphones as I'm sitting there with the guitar and hit, finding the same notes, I was able to basically figure out, I'd say 70% of the song. I mean, I can't play it as well, obviously, but and I made a good stab at it. So if you want to see my paltry attempt and my really bad strumming, you know, because I'm just learning. I just started. So you can go take a peek. to the place now. I should be there very shortly. Doing my head checks, making sure. Using my turn signal, trying to remember to turn it off. I did forget a couple of times. But uh, the point of the whole thing is I didn't give up and I picked the bass up again and I, you know, I'll take a day off for once in a while, but I'll play regularly and I notice improvements. My, my quick strumming is getting a little bit better. My ability to find the right fret at the right time with the right finger is getting better. Uh, my ability to sound out songs on, on, the, on the bass is getting better. And I'm definitely having a lot of fun, especially when I can kind of play the same notes as I'm listening to in the music uh, that I love. If you haven't heard anything about the Stranglers yet, please go and listen to them. They are amazing. All right, I'm here. It's my Kaylee Seven saying, keep practicing whatever you're practicing and don't give up. <laughs>